You want more than just that basic overlay we learned in the last episode. You want to be able to smoothly transition from scene to scene. Maybe go from something like this to... Something like this. Well, if you want to learn how to do that, stick around because that's what we're going to do today. It's Johnny and welcome to episode 4. If you haven't already, check out episodes 1 through 3 where we learn what software we need and how to set it all up. We'll put a little card over here in the top right. Today we're going to be talking about scenes. In the last episode we set up a very basic gameplay overlay that showed a webcam and a little uh, frame for your webcam and uh, social media handles, stuff like that. What if you want to do more? What if you want to move around? You know, maybe you have to get up and use the restroom, for example, and you don't want the game just, you know, your viewers just to see a blank chair where you used to be. So we want to let them know that you'll be right back. Or maybe you haven't started your stream yet. And you want to let your folks know that you'll be starting soon. Those are all reasons to have different scenes. So we're going to get into OBS and play around and dig into the settings and scenes and stuff like that. What we do, make sure to go ahead and click that little button down below to subscribe to me and like this video. So here we are in OBS and we're pretty much right where we left off after episode three. We've got our initial scene that we created as a gaming overlay. And as a little refresher, let's go through what that is. So a scene is a collection of sources and sources are all of these elements that you see on the screen in front of you. So images like the Twitter icon, this little bar, it can also be text elements, like our name. And of course, it can be video capture elements, like our webcam. Or if you have a capture card that you run from your console to your computer, then that would count as well. Obviously, you'd have your game in the background here. Sometimes you need more though, right? You know, you're not always on stream gonna be gaming. There are going to be times when you have to do something else, for example, you might have to use the restroom, or you have dogs and your dogs need to go out. Whatever the case may be, you might want to have to, you might have to take a break. We want to let our viewers know that we'll be starting soon, so perhaps you want to get things set up in the background, but you want to start streaming. And you give your viewers a chance to congregate, you know, you let them know, maybe you've just tweeted out and you say, hey, I'm going to be going live at 6 p.m. and it's 5.30. So you start your stream a little bit early and you put up a starting soon scene. What else? Well, maybe you want to have an intermission and an intermission where you're chatting with your viewers and you're not really playing the game. So a good example there would be, you know, maybe you're loading up a new game and you're waiting for the game to load or you're in, for example, Apex Legends and you're waiting for your squad to show up on, and you're just sit, kind of sitting there. Well, you can, you know, put an intermission screen in. Or maybe you just aren't playing any longer and you just want to have a chat. Well, whatever it is, that's a good use case for that kind of a scene. And of course, you know, if you are ending your, ending your stream and you're going offline, you can put up an offline scene as well. Let your viewers know that, hey, the stream's ending or ended, and, you know, give them a, a few minutes to talk about what your stream just was. All of those things are different use cases for different scenes. So how would we create a new scene? Well, it's the same way we did before. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna click the little plus button to add a new scene. And we'll start it off with a stream starting soon scene. So we'll just call this starting soon. Hit enter, and that creates a blank new scene. And you notice that really cool little transition? We'll talk about those later. Okay, so we've got our starting soon scene. It's blank. Let's change that. So we go in back into our Orbitron package that we downloaded, go into our screens, and we can see a few different ones. We have online, offline, and intermission. So let's just choose the online one, and, or the rather the stream start one. And we will go to the stream start and just drag it over. If I can actually do it properly, there we go, we'll drag that over. And as you can see, we immediately get a nice scene, an image that says, hey, we're gonna be starting soon, but it doesn't give any other information, it just says we're starting soon. 
Well, we're going to address that in just a second. Let's create another one. We'll call this one our ending scene. I'll hit enter, again a blank screen, and we'll choose our offline for this one. Just drag it over like we did before. And of course, one more time, we're going to add, and we'll call this our intermission. Hit enter. And for this one, we are going to drag over the intermission. And there we have it. So now we've very quickly created three new scenes. We've got a starting soon, we've got an ending and an intermission. Let's go back to our starting soon. Well, we're gonna to wanna to add some stuff, you know, get your social media handles in there like you did on the gaming overlay. Okay, well to do that, what we're gonna do instead of just adding them piece by piece like we did before in the gaming overlay, we're gonna create another new scene. And you'll see why we're doing this in a second. So we'll just call this scene our socials. Hit enter, and in this scene, what we're gonna do is pick our, pick whatever socials we wanna have. So we'll pick Instagram, drag that over, drag it down out of the way here, and we will pick Twitter, drag that over here, and again, just move it out of the way. And we'll pick YouTube and drag that one over as well. Okay, so now we've got our three icons of it ready to, ready to go. And you know what we can do one more here? How about our Discord? Because we happen to have a Discord server as well. So we will take that and drag it on over and put it in here. And you can see it just drops right on top of the other. No big deal. That was why I was moving them out of the way in the first place. Now that we've done that, we want to actually add our text. So we'll do it the same way we did before. Click a little, double little plus button. Click on the text. Now we can do one of two things. We can either add a new one or we can add an existing. Now, I caution you against adding existing and there's a reason why I'm giving you that caution. And that is because if you make changes to it in this scene, it will affect it in all the other scenes in which that element is. So let me give you a little example here. If I click and we use the YouTube channel name, for example, I click OK. See how it's really small and it's that same text? It's because it's exactly the same element that is on our gaming overlay. So if I change this and I change the font from the size 14 to a size 72, for example, and click OK, I click OK, OK, it looks pretty good here, but if I go back to my gaming screen, you'll notice it's changed as well, so we don't want that. So let's go back to our socials here and make that change back. So click on our gear icon, click on the select font, and then go scroll up and choose 14, which is what it was initially. Then OK. We're actually going to remove this from here because we're going to do it a different way. So let's go back to our gaming screen. So you can see now that it's changed back to the size that it was. Okay. But if I don't want to type everything in and I just want to keep what I have, well, uh, I can right click on that and I click on copy. And now when I go back to my social scene and I right click here and I click, I have two choices. I can click paste by reference and paste duplicate. So when you created that new scene and you added existing, that was a reference. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is paste a duplicate. And the duplicate, what it does is it creates an entirely new thing with all the same exact properties and transforms and everything else that your original one has. So it gives you a good starting point. It names it YouTube Channel 2, which is kind of a really lousy name, but we're going to keep it that just for now. We don't want it there, we want to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, and one other thing I want to let you know about is regards to text. So a lot of times you can just take an image and resize it by dragging it. Right now, that has an effect. I mean, if you make it too big, you'll see pixelation. Well, the same thing happens with your text. So this is really small and I want it bigger, but the, I, the way to do it is not by dragging the corner here because you can see it 
looks pretty lousy, right? Because it's pixelated and it's trying to stretch it into this new bounded size, which we don't want. So we're gonna right click on that, go back to transform, go back to reset transform, and it'll put it back in the corner. What we wanna do instead is to change the properties of it. So we're gonna go into the font, select font, you can use that same lemon milk font, you know, or we can use the Orbitron font that we downloaded specifically for this, Wh whichever font you want to use. Um, we'll choose 72 as the size and click OK, and now you can see that the text is completely clear, and that's what we want. We want to have nice, clear text. So we can drag that down here to near our YouTube channel, and the icon's a little small, so this one we can actually make it a little bit bigger here. And because it's a decent, um, a decent image, it's not going to get pixelated very, very easily. I assume if I drag it into you know, some ridiculous size, you'll see the pixelation here. But when it's small enough, you won't see the pixelation. So we'll take that and we'll move it over here. And then for our Twitter as well, we'll put in the same thing. And we have, we'll go back to our gaming screen. We'll pick our Twitter handle, right click, click on copy. Go back to our socials. And we are going to right click and click on paste duplicate. Again, we want to change the properties of that. So we're going to click the gear, select font. And we're going to again, choose the same size, 72. Click on okay. And we'll move this down to our Twitter icon here. We'll make our Twitter icon a little bit bigger. So it's about the same size as our text. Not just like this. It's about the same size. We'll move that just a little bit closer to there. So these two are about the same size. Now our Instagram and, well, in my case, my Instagram and my Twitter usernames are the same. So here I can use that reference. So I'm just going to right click, copy, and then right click, paste reference. And now I can move that right down here. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I change one of these, if I go into the properties of that one, for example, and I change the text to just Johnny Bravo and click OK, you'll notice it's changed in both places. So this is helpful if you, you know, have something like this where your username is the same across multiple platforms. You can just use the same thing over and over again. Let's change that back to 0311. Click OK. And again, we're going to resize our icon here so it's about the same size as the other ones. OK. And now we're going to command click these two, drag it closer. Man, click these two, drag them closer. And there you have it. So now you've got your, got your socials. Oh, I didn't do my Discord. I actually don't remember the link to my Discord off the top of my head. Um, but it is in the description of the video below. So make sure to go ahead and click it and join the community. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one for now. Right click, remove. Are you sure you want to remove it? Yes. And it's the same thing that you can do by selecting it and clicking the minus button here. Okay, we want to group all of these together. So we select them all and you right click here and you click group selected items. And what does this do? Well, I'll show you. So we'll call this our social group. So now that we've done that, when I click on the social group, I can move all of them around at the same time. They're all grouped together, which is nice. It, it makes it easy. And if I want to show them or not show them, this little button right here, this is the visible uh, invisible button. Rather than having to do each one of them, I can click one and it makes the entire group invisible. So it's pretty nice. Well, that's cool, but how is that helpful in other places? Well, let's go back to our starting soon scene. I'll click plus, click on scene. And I'm going to choose the scene that I just created, the social scene, and click OK. And look at that, it shows right up. So now I've got this. 
But what's the benefit of this? Well, if I go back to my social scene, for example, and I say, you know what? I'd like these to be a little bit higher instead of just right in the center so I can just drag them up like this without making any other changes to any other scenes. If I go back to my starting soon scene, you'll see now that, hey, these have moved up. So creating scenes and importing scenes, especially with reusable components, gives you a, a, a pretty nice and convenient way of managing different elements on your, on your presentation. Okay, so we've got our starting soon scene. We've got our social media handles. You know what, I wanna have that exact same information here on my offline screen, so offline scene. So just like before, click plus, click scene, choose existing, I'm gonna choose my socials scene, click okay. Pretty nifty, right? So now I've got my gaming overlay, my starting soon overlay, my intermission, my ending, and my socials. So the one that we're actually gonna use on stream would be in these top four. The, the one down here is just sort of a support scene. Now we can rearrange the order of these just like we can with the, this, the sources in our scenes. And I like to keep them in sort of how I would use them, right? So obviously I would have my starting soon scene first. And then I would go to my gaming scene. After that, I would go to my intermission scene. And then finally I would have my ending scene. One thing we haven't done yet is a be right back. So if I have to get up and use the restroom or let the dogs out, for example, which I've had to do a few times while trying to record this video, <laughs> you would create a Be Right Back scene. So unfortunately, the Orbitron package doesn't come with a nice Be Right Back screen. Now, some of the other ones do. Uh, we'll take a look, for example, if I go up to Visual by Impulse, do they have it? They do, okay. And this one actually has animated screens, which are really kind of cool. And well, I'll show you what that is. So. We'll just add that, and it's not gonna match color-wise at all, but we'll call this Be Right Back. And in this case, what we're gonna do, instead of adding an image, we are going to add a media file. So, just like before, we're going to, if I can successfully do it, apparently my clicking and dragging skills are, there we go, not to par. And there we go, so we just dragged it over. And as you can see, the animations, right? So it's got these cool little particle effects happening. And one of the things actually before I do that is you're going to want to go into here, into properties, and you want to make sure you loop this because this video will end eventually. Uh, I forget exactly how long it is. I think it's like 20 seconds or so. So what you want to do is click loop to make sure that it's constantly playing in the background so it doesn't just stop. That's a very key for these animations. A lot of the looping backgrounds, for example, if you remember at the beginning of this video, you saw I had a sort of a red and blue animated background. Well, it's a, that one itself, I think, is a 10-second video that's on a loop, and it just goes and replays itself over and over and over again. The last thing I want to cover is the transition. So the scene transition is how you move between your scenes. Now, it defaults to using the, um, a fade. So it defaults to this fade of 300 milliseconds. And what that is, is it just kind of what it sounds like. It fades in and fades out between the scenes. So, you know, it, it does a decent job, but it's kind of boring, right? Well, what I have here is what's called a stinger transition. And did I miss it? No, there it is. So I renamed it Retro Red. But if I want to add a stinger transition, what you do is you click the little plus button here and choose on Stinger, and Stinger is just a little movie that you add in. Now, the key to these, we'll call it Stinger just for fun, the key to these is this bit right here. So this transition point, and every one of your Stinger transition movies that you, that you get or you create at some point has to fill your entire scene. Because when it does, that's when OBS will actually do the swapping behind that image. So I'll click cancel and we'll go ahead and remove that stinger. We don't want that one. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I go into this retro red and I go and click on the gear and go into properties, you'll see that at 1000 milliseconds or one second into the scene, that's where the, it covers the entirety of everything. Let me show you what I mean. 
So if you click this and play it, you'll see that right here at the one second mark, the red covers the entire screen and that's where we want to tell OBS, hey, take the scene that you were looking at and swap it with this one. These Stinger files have what's called an alpha channel and that's what allows the you to still see the scene as the Stinger transition runs and then you'll see the new scene as the Stinger, the Stinger transition sort of fades away. So uh, again, if you think of this little scene transition here, if you watch this, and I'll slow this down in the video, you can see that you saw my starting soon scene for a while until the red grid filled the entire screen. And then as the red grid started to disappear, you then saw this gaming overlay start to up here. And the reason why you did it, you could see that is because of that alpha channel. If you didn't have an alpha channel or the transparency, then what would happen is as soon as I started that transition, the entire thing would go black, which is not the most professional looking you know, way to do this. All right, so that's about it for this, for this particular video. So this was episode four, where we talked about the scenes and how we're gonna use different scenes, how to create them, how to import scenes into other scenes. So you can do things like create reusable components and of course, how to group things together. So you can see that I've got my, my webcam and you know the frame and the camera, it's the source itself. Mm -hmm.